We have become wild beasts. We do not fight. We defend ourselves against annihilation. It is not against men that we fling our bombs. What we do know of men in this moment when death is hunting us down, now, for the first time in three days, we can see his face. Now, for the first time in three days, we can oppose him. We feel a mad anger. War. It's a concept that's hard to grasp. Here I am, a 14-year-old boy writing and recording about war. I couldn't be any further from war than I already am. However, I'm sure Paul Bomber felt the same way before 1915. He too was just a local schoolboy with a lack of purpose in the world, until he and his friends felt they were doing their country a disservice by not being enrolled in the German army. He was only three years older than I am before he was out fighting on the Western Front for his country, and I'm just doing homework and playing sports. He's overwhelmed by constantly eluding death and mass destruction to his body. Through the book, he evolves to become more of a killing machine, but also thinks to a deeper level about the consequences that war has on a specific country or the world. He grows distant to connecting with anybody who isn't in his regiment, and seems to be impatient and angry whenever being talked to by anybody. Personally, I learned from Paul and his choices, and they are lessons I will carry with me over vast periods of time. It's every day we experience something new. For most days of this past month, I've learned what it means to put yourself on the line to fight in war. When I began reading All Quiet on the Western Front, I had no idea what war was like and what soldiers were forced to endure during times of conflict. In turn, I quickly picked up what it meant to be in war through the dark nature of the novel. In the book, we are introduced to Paul. He's a youngish boy who joins the army because of his pride. He quickly learns the ins and outs of, of war and gains a sixth sense to become a better soldier. He learns from mentors about subtle details of war and he marvels of their ability. We couldn't do it without Kedzinski. He has a sixth sense. There are such people everywhere, but one does not appreciate it at first. Paul Bomber, all quiet on the Western Front. Twisted and confused, I furiously turned the pages to find more detail in a masterpiece painted by Eric Maria Remarque. With each passing word, I saw more and more of what war was truly like and how people would be treated in times of need. In doing so, I felt more disgusted towards those who would put anybody through this type of treatment. In this book, you constantly feel the same feeling of grit and hopelessness through every new battle, doctor encounter, and Paul's personal encounters. Continuing to push through this book was a little difficult, with not only the sharp and clear descriptiveness of the book, but also the constant length of each chapter, which regularly exceeded 30 pages. When I look back onto this book, I will think of the battles, fights, and struggles of the soldiers and how they were fighting for something more than themselves. They were fighting for those who were fighting with them. However, the thing that will remind me most of this book is the feeling you get in your stomach when you hear of everything these poor souls were forced to go through. While reading All Quiet on the Western Front, I've experienced more disgust and horror than ever before. It took me against my will into the spitting and chaotic whirlwind of war. Like the young recruits of Germany, I was overwhelmed with the brutality and conflict of war. The l details of liquidated lungs being coughed up, bodies being blown to pieces, heads being cut off and spewing blood from the top. Even I had no idea such violence existed. When reading this book, I felt as if this depiction of war wasn't reality. I've heard of rats living in trenches before, yet not of them eating my, the dead corpses of my comrades. The mental piece of war may also be even worse than the physical aspect. In chapter 6, I endured someone losing control of their mind and body and ended up running into the field, completely exposed to fire, then being blown to chunks of flesh. Being thrown into the forefront of war, 
is something that could and would scar any human, and I'm certainly included in that statement. I feel if I was one of those recruits, I would be just as unhelpful and clueless throughout the whole combat, no matter how vicious it would be. The description that the author manages to use in this book without it getting boring is stunning and tends to leave an uneasy feeling in your stomach. Some parts of me admire this piece of writing, yet the more overwhelming part of me finds the spectacularly described piece of writing as horrifying as hell itself. Eric M Maria Remarque has captured the terror, depression, and brotherhood of heavy conflict. While reading, it felt as if my emotions were a rag doll, being jerked and tossed around without a care in the world of how I landed. Furthermore, through the early chapters of the book, it was as if I were being forced to trudge through an endless siege of mud. However, these 42 pages became something different. While it was a marathon in itself to get through chapter 6, it was also like a quick jog. It was the best chapter of literature I think I have ever read. In the end, it was a run that was well worth the effort. With the influence of warfare, the mindset of a person can be changed in an instant. Through the later chapters of All Quiet on the Western Front, we see Paul change the way he thinks, feels, and reacts during war. We can see Paul start to think about the devastating impact war has on other people and nations, and that he is a part of that destruction. We also start to see him become far more nervous during combat. A bomb or something lands close beside me. I have not heard it coming, and I am terrified. At the same moment, a senseless fear takes hold of me. Paul Bomber, all quiet on the Western Front. After his leave, Paul has, in a way, become a recruit again. He seems to not have had any experience in the field or any veteran tips to help him pick up on any incoming attacks. After Paul returned from his stay at his home, he took a new outlook onto war and saw it in a whole new light. In chapter 8, he is responsible for guarding Russians in a concentration camp and begins to think about the war and how it changed the world. A word of command has made these silent figures our enemies. A word of command might transform them into our friends. At some table, a document is signed by some persons whom none of us knows, and then for years together, that very crime, which formerly the world's condemnation and severest penalty fall, becomes our highest aim. Paul Bomber, all quiet on the Western Front. Paul gets re-exposed to war after his 17-day leave and got shot in the arm and injured his leg as a result of a bomb during Chapter 10. He was later brought to a hospital where he reflects on the war even further than he already had at his home. A man cannot realize that above such shattered bodies there are still human faces. There are hundreds of thousands in Germany, hundreds of thousands in France, hundreds of thousands in Russia, how senseless is everything that can ever be written, done, or thought when such things are possible? Paul Bomber, all quiet on the Western Front. While Paul continues to evolve during his time at war, seeing how he changes to perceive war will define how he will act. Life doesn't always have a happy ending. All Quiet on the Western Front is a prime example of this as Paul faces adversity in surviving and coping with some of his comrades' death. In the later stages of the book, maybe even starting at around chapter 7, Paul begins to face tragedy regularly in his life, all of which vary in severity, but all are something that could permanently scar a human, one of which was the death of his comrade and friend, Stanislaus Kedzinski, however, Paul refers to him as Cat. During one of his last battles of the book, Cat gets hit in the shin, and immediately the wound begins to bleed. Paul quickly binds up the wound and attempts to bring Cat back to the hospital, where he could be saved. But in a long and determined effort by Paul, he is able to bring him back to the hospital. However, Paul would soon discover that Cat's head was penetrated by a splinter, and he soon died afterwards. Cat falls. We too are alone. 
I bind up his wound. His shin seems to be smashed. It has got the bone. The wound begins to bleed fast. Cat cannot be left by himself. Twice we rest. He suffers acutely on the way. I sweat and my face is swollen with the strain of carrying. My legs and my hands tremble. I have trouble finding my water bottle to take a pull. My lips tremble as I try to think, but I smile. Cat is saved. On the way without my having noticed, Cat has caught a splinter in the head. There is just one little hole. It must have been a very tiny stray splinter, but it has sufficed. Cat is dead. Paul Bomber, all quiet on the Western Front. The pursuit of trying to save Cat was too much of an emotional roller coaster for Paul. Furthermore, all of his comrades are dead as well. Towards the end of the war, Paul's life as a military man became more depressing than any other time in his life that we know from the novel. In the last chapter of the book, we discover that Paul has been exposed to poison gas and that he would soon die a few days later. Yet he seemed to be happy to see the end come. It's a fitting end to a character who doesn't know anything other than war.